Hey, welcome back. Time for five more DM Quick Tips. These are the tips that I have learned running and playing games over the last 40 years. Now, this is the fifth video of an ongoing series of tips, and I'll go ahead and put the full playlist down in the description below. While my tips are geared towards advanced Dungeons and Dragons, many of them should be useful no matter which version that you play. But tip number one. Now, I was guilty of this just the other night, and we were playing a game, combat was starting to drag, and the rolls turned cold for both the players and me. Nobody could hit. You know, instead of just building a bit of tension and having the next players hit be the final blow, I let the game drag on and on with roll after roll. So, my first tip today is to not be a slave to that printed hit points. When the combat starts to drag, end it and move on with something else. On the other side of the coin, if it seems a bit too easy, you could consider upping the hit points, adding another minion, but whatever you do, don't let it get boring like I did. Uh, when setting up combat, you know, use the Dungeon Master's Guide to help you develop the expected difficulty level. The 5e DM's Guide does an excellent job of this and has resources starting at about page 81 and running through to page 87. The 2e DM Guide has some good resources starting on page 94 to about page 103. Now, the 1e Guide doesn't have like a specific section, but it does have good stuff interspersed throughout the book. Now, I haven't really played versions 3 or 4, so if you know of some good resources for those editions or any other resources, go ahead and throw a comment down below. Uh, tip number 3. While we're on the topic, make sure to read the monster entries that you expect to use before the game starts and make some notes to yourself. You know, in your OneNote, Google Docs, your old-fashioned piece of note paper note card. Uh, note any special actions or attacks. And, you know, make a note of what tactics a creature might follow. That way you're not forgetting it in the middle. I don't know how many times I've had a creature and had this really cool effect or really cool uh, attack and kind of spaced it right away because I didn't have it written down. You know, writing it down is a great memory jog. You don't have to write the whole thing just enough so you remember this is a note for you. Uh, for example, I recently had a Grell. I had them attack the first PC that was going to enter the space it was hunting in, kind of in a, a side cavern. But one of the PCs, they said, I'm just going to step over here and, and get, get out of the way of another event that was happening. So I had that Grell attack. And, uh, of course, the, the PC fought back. More PCs came to help. As soon as the Grell realized it was overran, it turned and it fled. All right. And it escaped into a seemingly bottomless pit which is a uh, part of the plot point of what they're working on, so it's not just a random uh, place for it to escape. Uh, tip number four, uh, which is don't be afraid to use tactics with your monsters, like the Grell. You know, I had him escape. Your monsters, especially if they have an intelligence above a plant, they're going to have established tactics that they follow. You know, even normal animals, wolves, coyotes, lions, they're all experienced hunters, they're not going to engage in overwhelming force. Well, the lion might. But uh, they're going to seek to flee if they get significantly hurt. They're just not going to stand and defend their ground until they die. You know, magical and fantastical creatures should have even better tactics than mundane earth animals, right? Tip number five. You know, if you need a quick NPC, I find it's handy to have a stash of classless NPCs' personalities. Just the personalities, stats, a couple little quirks ready to go on a note card or dock or whatever. Uh, and then if you need them, you assign them and uh, you start to use them. You know, you just uh, set, set up that dock, that note card, couple personality quirks, roll the stats, and don't don't even assign them a name right away. Maybe you'll come up with a different name. You know, you could have a st stable of names that you pull from, but I wouldn't attach it directly to that list of stats. You can always just grab it out of your stable of names. And then uh, when you need it, use it. If you need more stats, you know, grab the monster manual for your audition and, gra and find something that's close to an entry that, you know, for what you're trying to do. Bonus tip. 
A quick bonus tip is don't be afraid to give those NPCs some funny voices. You know, if nothing else, try to talk a bit slower or faster than usual. Or in a higher or lower pitch than you usually do. Just write down what you do so you can imitate their voice when you need it again. You know, you can mix them up. You can talk really fast or you can talk really low, you know, and kind of mix that up. So... At any rate, thanks for taking a look. What quick tips would you add? Please let me know in the comments down below. Catch you next time. Bye. Hey, thanks for watching the video. Please give a like, share, subscribe, and hit that bell icon. Catch you next time. Bye.